Hello, welcome to Walk in the Park. My name is Tony Ingram, and this is the 15th of January, 2014, episode 66. If you want to see more of my episodes, go to walkinpark.com, my vid blog. Okay, this week is going to be a lot of fun. We're going to uh, deal with uh, things that have been going on in the weather and in the news and so forth. The... Um, yeah, if um, you're watching this at this time of year, you know it's been very cold and also warm. The weather has been on a real seesaw, dipping from down to 10 below zero and more, and then up to the 50s at times. And this has resulted in uh, quite a um, schizophrenia in the uh, flow of water and the freezing of water around here, too. So I'm going to start it off with uh, one of my Park Minute episodes, which is about uh, Fall Creek here and show you what happened uh, in less than 24 hours, about 24 hours in the creek that sort of set the stage for what we're going to do after this. So uh, stand by and we'll go to that. Ithaca Falls gushed with the flow from a thaw on January 6. zero that night began to clog Fall Creek with ice. Okay, so that gives you an idea of the uh, rapid changes that took place, have been taking place lately, and uh, we had some real Arctic air slide down over us. I guess uh, with global warming, the integrity of the Arctic air mass and the jet stream that seems to hold it stable uh, is uh, very sloppy now, so uh, we can get extremes. Uh, we're getting our turn this year. I guess uh, Europe and Asia got uh, frozen out by that kind of uh, slide a few years ago. So to get a perspective of what this has meant for, say, downtown Ithaca, where the creeks, Fall Creek and Cascadilla Creek and Six Mile Creek, but particularly Cascadilla Creek and Fall Creek, um, uh, are channelized and f don't really have anywhere to go when the water rises, which let's just go up in the air for a second here, take a look at this aerial photograph taken by Photography 4D. You can go online and find them. They have a Facebook page. Very interesting. They have a quadcopter that goes up and takes pictures from the air. And this is Ithaca. Looking over Ithaca High School, and just above that is actually Fall Creek, running under Cayuga Street in the lower right and Route 13. All the way to the left, center left, the edge of the picture, you may be able to see Ithaca Falls in, in Fall Creek. So it's going across town. Here's a, a Bill Hecht aerial picture at a better time of year. Looking down in the lower right is Fall Creek coming out to where it joins Cayuga Lake. In the center of the picture is Cayuga Inlet. And then to the left center, you can see a stream coming in that comes underneath the highway, which is Route 13, and goes by the Farmer's Market, left center there. You can't really see that that well there. But uh, that is Cascadilla Creek. 
which you can see is considerably narrower, narrower in its mouth than is Fall Creek. So uh, Cascadilla Creek really gets squeezed there. And that's, that's where the, there's been some flooding because of all the ice and the thaw. Then we'll just jump up in the air again in this Bill Hecht picture over the south end of Cuga Lake. And you can see in the center of the picture that several streams come in. Fall Creek is coming down from above. And then from the uh, right is coming in Cayuga Inlet. And then if you look at the right center, you can see uh, just make out the mouth of Cascadilla Creek where it comes in at the Ithaca Farmer's Market and enters Cayuga Lake. So all this water has to come. This is like half the water that comes into Cayuga Lake comes in right here. And uh, it comes into shallow water in Cayuga Lake. And it has to... Um, uh, deal with this. These, these are the next couple of pictures were taken by Hillary Lambert of the um, Cayuga Lake Watershed Network and this is the ice at the south end of the lake that builds up because the lake is only about 10 feet deep or less for quite a distance out and so an ice layer builds up on it and then you've got a lot of water pouring down the creeks into the uh, Cayuga Lake there. It uh, is constrained by the ice to some degree. Okay, so uh, to get a look at that, we're gonna let me just see what we've got on the skid here. We've got a, a video coming up. We're gonna go back up in the air again with uh, photography 4D. Now this is looking at Fall Creek from the air. Look at all the ice it built up. You can imagine that from the first video I showed where it started to build up. Fall Creek is full of ice, uh, at least on the surface. There's water flowing underneath. But when you get the thaw, it breaks up the ice and it. Um, uh, causes ice jams, particularly at places like bridges. And the, um, uh, if there's too much of an ice jam and too much water coming down too quickly, then it can flood the neighborhood, and that's exactly what happened. Not so much in Fall Creek, Fall Creek as it did in Cascadilla Creek, but I, the city did have to jump on this. So what we're going to do now is, let's see, we're going to jump to our second video here. This is going to be all right, jump up in the air and take a look at them. The city trying to remove the ice in that's that's blocking Fall Creek. So we'll be right with you. Okay, so the city's heavy equipment was out there, that, I guess with this rented uh, long arm excavator to uh, pull chunks of ice out of the creek that would block the flow from the next thaw. So uh, it's a big deal, very expensive, a lot of uh, work. So we're going to now take a look at Cascadilla Creek, go up in the air again with Bill Hecht. Looking down the big stream on the right is, uh, Ca is Cayuga Inlet, which goes down to the lake, of course. And... Um, the stream coming into the lower center there, that is Cascadilla Creek. Right in the, just right of center is the Ithaca Farmer's Market. And the sewage treatment plant is right behind that, to the left of that. And then uh, it comes from under Route 13 in the lower left. And Cascadilla Creek comes across town. So we're going to look at, let's see, we're going to look at what Cascadilla Creek looked like this past week. They're all jammed up with ice. 
So it's really uh, uh, quite a mess. And uh, so when the ice would, uh, when you have the thaw and the ice would melt, chunks of it would break up and they'd uh, move down the creek and then get pile up with one another, pile up under the bridges and what have you, and then uh, water would then pile up behind them. This was uh, a couple of days ago, and I took, like, I think it was on uh, Sunday, and um, yeah, and it, o it overflowed the banks and flooded the neighborhood, and again, they had to put in equipment to, uh, to dig that out, so it had been cleared, and it was just this cycle going on several times here, so... Um, now here's some water that's starting to open up here. But let's see, what are we going to get to next year? Okay, uh, we're going to go to another video, this time showing what we've been looking at here. Look at this thing. I see it. Parking lot flooding at the top. <laughs> and, uh, and I didn't know that it was groundwater coming up and there was, I pumped it out, I had a, I had a shock thing. There's some spots where they can't get to the ice or something. It's almost above that. Okay. Almost ended too early there. Um, so those last images were that the creek had opened up. It doesn't necessarily mean that um, the water was... Uh, uh, not going to flood because it was rising from that morning according to a guy I talked to there because still farther downstream there was um, ice so um, now we're going to look at probably our most exciting video clip today which was provided to me by Ken Christopher Hill took this on um, uh, the section of Cascadilla Creek which is completely channelized by walls that's in between I think it's Tioga Street and Cayuga Street, so we'll go there. It, it was taken five seconds after the ice uh, jam had broken at one point. Let's see, what did he wrote? He wrote, uh, uh, ice dam breaks Cascadilla Creek by Sears Creek. Five seconds after the I ice dam broke, loosing tons of frozen slabs to flow past, past Cayuga, eventually spilling over Lake, over Lake and Willow into the north side neighborhood by Monroe Street. Okay, so uh, let's look at that one. It's gonna go over. It's gonna go over. Yeah, that's what we've been worried about. Yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, God. Yeah, it's coming down again. Here comes the actual water. Whoa! Yeah. There's a huge amount of water coming down. Yeah. I hope it, I mean, I hope it has a chance to clear out of this before it again. Oh, it's not going to creep. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's way lower down there. That's going to mess everything up down the stem. That's going to make things hard for that ex excavator. Yeah, excavator. there's two excavators down there. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
All right. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, certainly wouldn't have won a fall in the creek at that point. Um, now we're going to go down to the other end of Cascadilla Creek, right where it joins the Ithaca Farmer's Market. You can see it's all iced in there. Cayuga Inlet is all frozen. So this is where the water's going in Cascadilla Creek. It ends up under the ice. So there has to be enough, uh, uh, well, you have to slow down the flow enough. You've got to create, uh, uh, you know, if it gets too much, it gets all backs up along with the ice jams farther upstream. Looking off the dock to the south, looking upstream at Cayuga Inlet, Again, another shot there. I like that reflection in the puddle on the top of the ice. So uh, what we're going to do now is take a look at that area. There's another video here. And there's going to be a long pipe in there. And I believe it's going to show us where the city creatively was pumping uh, uh, the sewage treatment plant treated water effluent that goes into Cayuga Lake normally, which is warmer than the creek water, and pumps it upstream in Cascadilla Creek and dumps it in the creek to help melt some of the ice. So let's watch all of that. Okay, so um, you might have noticed some of the ice that was still um, stranded up on the shore by the highway there, and uh, some puddles with ice in them and so forth were remnants of flooding around the haunt, which I guess got took a bath. So uh, here's a picture, another picture taken by uh, Hillary Lambert of the Cayuga Lake Watershed Network. This is showing that pipe farther upstream in the, on the just the east side of Route 13. We were just on the west side pumping, it, pumping that warmer water from the effluent of the sewage treatment plant. There's nothing the matter with it. It goes right into the lake. It's been treated, but it is warmer, and uh, I guess that probably helped to um, uh, cut down on, you know, melt some of that ice. Here's uh, just a couple of pictures she also took in the Fall Creek neighborhood around Willow Avenue and um, Monroe and Madison Avenue and so forth of sandbags. Of course, you probably heard the news the city had this huge sandbagging bagging effort. A couple of hundred volunteers got together at the uh, Department of Public Works and filled sandbags and distributed them to houses in the neighborhood to try to keep the, um, the floods out of people's basement. And they also installed sump pumps. You can see actually a hose coming out there that's come out of someone's basement to keep it dry, at least keep, not dry, but keep the water from rising up to uh, um, uh, furnaces and electrical equipment and so forth and not knocking that out. So this is Cornell Cooperative Extension's office on Willow Avenue, and uh, these sandbags, I guess, helped save that building from getting uh, heavily damaged by the 
floodwaters from the ice jams, ice dams on Cascadilla Creek. Okay, so let's see where we're going to go now. I'm going to slide over to a proper framing here in the picture here. Uh, let's see. We're going to take a look at another video. This one is new. I just made this. It's uh, one of my par another one of my Park Minute series here. And it's uh, Icy Buttermilk Creek. So let's see what's happening upstream in one of the tributaries. This, in this case, one of the tributaries of Cuca Inlet. Buttermilk Creek in Buttermilk Falls State Park. And not quite as dramatic an effect, but uh, the ice is really, uh, and snow really has gone through some fluctuations. And uh, you can be able to see from this video why even when there's been a thaw, there's still plenty of very treacherous ice on the gorge trail. And to go in there is a very risky affair and has cost people their lives, especially during high water, during a, um, a thaw. And uh, so let's go there and take a look at uh, Buttermilk Creek. blog walkinpark.com I, uh, I do post them as well I'll be posting this one later in the week the um, I don't have enough time to do another video I have which is 11 or 12 minutes it's called winter water but it uh, goes all over the place uh, to uh, Ithaca Falls uh, Cayuga Lake uh, Teganic Falls Watkins Glen it's, you know, it shows freezing and thawing and floods and what have you it's a very cool video uh, I might just show the beginning of it at the end of this but um, uh, we'll do that another time, but I'm going to take you to some uh, color. The uh, this time of year is kind of a um, black and white uh, time of season. Maybe a little brown in there. Not a lot of colors. Maybe a little blue if the sun comes out. But the colors tend to be drab this time of year. But of course, in the fall, we got our fall colors. This was sec this was in October, and out on uh, Clinton Street near Albany, I happened to. Uh, come by there and actually parked in this neighborhood and this is just after a frost and there are ginkgo trees there and the ginkgo trees whose leaves had turned color um, dropped them all one night and covered up the almost like a snowfall cover up cars and the, the lawn and the sidewalk and so forth so I thought that was very pretty I've been waiting to share that uh, with folks um, in this show but I've had so much other material I haven't gotten to look at the ginkgo leaves. Now we're going to do some really abstract stuff. We're going to go over, it happens to be over in Connecticut. My brother is a, um, um, an outdoor photographer, nature photographer, landscape photographer. Um, and he takes very interesting photographs. This is of a creek. Let me see, that's called, uh, what is that? Middle River in Stafford, Connecticut, which is where he lives. And he zoomed in on the reflections, I think, of some 
red oak leaves, and then there's some yellow sugar maple leaves above uh, and reflected in the water going around this stem coming out of the water. So it's really beautiful arty stuff. Here's another shot that he took and uh, really quite lovely. And another one. Wow. That is gorgeous. So there's so many people taking such great photos these days. I was at um, the most recent uh, display of the um, uh, annual show of the Cayuga Nature Photographers. It was at the, it's currently at the Unitarian Church in Ithaca. And uh, there's a lot of neat stuff to see there. So if you happen to be at the church, uh, or maybe you can go in and take a look at that display. But uh, a lot of great photographers around, and it's fun to show some of their work like they're doing. So, uh, like I'm doing. So, okay, we only have a couple of minutes left, and I think I'm going to start this last video. Uh, just to start it, give you a taste of what it's uh, about, and um, winter water it's called, and then another time we'll show the whole thing, because we're only going to get a couple of minutes of it, so stand by, please. In November and December, winter comes to the gorges in the Finger Lakes region. Mist around Taganic Falls freezes on the cliffs. The moving water of Buttermilk Creek resists freezing as the snow accumulates on the hemlock trees and rock ledges. Snow sits on the ledges of Pinnacle Rock above Buttermilk Creek in Buttermilk Falls State Park. Ice soon covers the trail, making it treacherous. The gorge trail has been closed. Okay, well that's all I have time to show you today, but um, uh, it's just the beginning and uh, somewhat similar to what I already showed you in the uh, uh, Park Minute a few minutes ago. So that's it. That's all we have time for today. Uh, if you want to see more of uh, our episodes, go to walkinpark.com. Walk -park Once again, this is episode 66, recorded on January 15th, 2014. Thanks for joining us.